Hi, thanks for joining us today. If this ministry has impacted your life, we want to hear about it. You can send us your story at amen at vnchurch.com. Also, we would love if you would partner with us financially. You can go to vnchurch.com and click the Give Online or text your donation amount to 757-230-2110. To honor copyright laws, we have removed some audio and video elements from this message. Now here's this week's message. Welcome to Vineyard Community Church. How's everyone doing today? Who's ready to see Tom Brady win? Yeah, come on, don't hate. Do you really want to see Blake Bortles in the Super Bowl? Come on, let's be real, all right? You didn't even know the Jaguars were a franchise till last weekend. Don't act like, don't act like, you. oh, I've been rooting for Jacksonville the whole time. No, you aren't. Okay, anyways, I'm so glad you're here. I also want to welcome my people watching us online. So glad you're watching us. You're, you're tuned in. You're a part of our community today, okay? So before I get started, I want to thank our amazing senior pastors, Pastors Andy and Sharon Mead for giving me, giving me this opportunity to hang out with you guys for the next couple of weekends as we just learn about Jesus. Come on. And we're gonna we're just gonna lift them up. And also a shout out to our Mexico missions team right now down on Mazalan doing great things for God, okay? But we last week we started a four-part series called Uphill Habits, where we are looking at how to have godly habits to better our lives and in return better the world around us. Now we know that we are products of what we repeatedly do. We know that we are products of what we repeatedly do. You are a product of what you repeatedly do. I am a product of what I repeatedly do. We form habits, then habits form us. We form habits and habits form us. You form a habit and your habit will form you. See, check this out. The theme kind of for this series has been this. Everyone has uphill hopes but downhill habits. People have uphill hopes. Oh, I want to do this. I want to achieve this. But we kind of got some downhill habits that get us stuck. Okay. Now, uphill. Why do we call this series uphill? Uphill for two reasons. We call it uphill for two reasons. Reason number one is this. Because we know everything worth having is worth fighting for. Come on. Everything worth having is worth fighting for. Your marriage is worth fighting for. Your kids are worth fighting for. Beating those destructive addictions is worth fighting for. Being a LeBron fan is worth fighting for. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Don't hate. But it can feel uphill. It can feel like a climb. It can feel like, like when am I ever going to get to the top of this mountain? When, I, when am I going to get there? It can feel uphill. The second reason why we call it uphill, because when we think of God, we often think of God being above, God in heaven, God on top. So we want habits that move us towards God, upward towards God. So we want uphill habits that in the climb of life will become more and more like Jesus along the way. We're following him. We're becoming more like him. We will fight uphill as we become more like Jesus. Now, our second habit we will discuss today is highly important in order to move upward towards God. I would even say without this habit, the other habits we talk about will, will not make it. This is a make it or break it kind of habit. So if you lean into this message today, if you just open your hearts, open your minds for what God has to say today, I believe that this can be a very significant day in your life. I believe that you can look back in your life one day and think about this day. This is the day that God touched me if you just lean in to this message, okay? So if you are taking notes or following along on our social media platforms, you can title habit number two, a change of mind. A change of mind. In order to move uphill towards God, towards your purpose, there must be a change of mind. There must be a change in the way we think. The mind is a terrible thing to waste, but the mind can also play tricks on you and make you miss out on what God has for you. We must control our thoughts. We must control the way we think. We must have a change 
of mine. See, believe it or not, for the longest time in my life, I had a thought that loomed over me. I had a mindset that I operated out of. For the longest time in my life, I felt like I was the dumb kid. I feel like I didn't have all the brains. I was the dumb kid. I had a hard time learning how to read. Really didn't know how to read well until I was 12. Never did great in school. I shocked myself at the age of 21 when I passed a two-year Bible um, college that, that we have here in the vineyard. When I got my certificate, I show it to people who believe that miracles stop back in the Bible. I said, nah, look at this. This is a miracle right now. I got, I got college classes, okay? See, but seriously, I really thought I was dumb. I thought school was not something I could do. You know, I said, man, I made a decision. I'm going to make it through my life with my charisma and my decent looks. You know, <laughs> that's how I'm going to do it. And then I need to get big to try to help that, okay? Become like The Rock or Zac Efron, one of the two. But, um, so, but anyways, recently in my life, Pastor Sharon challenged me. She challenged me to get a bachelor's degree. And I, she challenged me to get a bachelor's degree, and I remember I was sitting in her office, I'm looking at her, she's telling me this, and I look at her with honor and respect, and I say back to her, woman, you must have lost your mind. I don't know what you're talking about. You be talking about the same person here, you gotta be, you, what you drinking back there, Pastor Sharon? I don't know what's going on, okay? See, for me, my wife is the smart one. She's the money maker. She's, she's the one doing the thing. She's my sugar mama. Come on, and I'm perfectly content with that. You want one too. You know you do. But, but Pastor Sharon challenged me. She challenged me again to go to school. So I thought to myself, I know Pastor Sharon hears from God. I know she hears from God. She seems pretty passionate about this, so I, I'll explore it. But I thought to myself, this ain't never going to happen. I thought this was never going to happen. But so I went, here you go. So I went to TCC. I said, let me check out TCC. What if I got an associate's degree and my, and my two-year Bible college degree? Maybe that would be good. So I went there. I got ready to take the math and English placement test. You know, I'm sitting in the booth. I got my number two pencil. I got all my stuff. I said, math, English, this finna be a breeze, you know. I'm ready for this, right? So I ended up taking the test. You know, I took it way fast. I was like, wow, I'm, this is, went by a lot faster than I thought. Then anyways, after I got the results, I went to the counselor's office. I'm sitting in her office. She's sitting behind her desk, and she's looking at my results, and she has this concerned mm, facial expression going on. I'm like, wow, why is she looking at my results like that? And I said, maybe she's looking at it and thinking to herself, dang, this guy's real smart. He should be at like Harvard or something, not community college. Then after she sets down my results, she looks at me and she says, Mr. Gaines. I'm like, yep. She said, Mr. Gaines, mm-hmm. Mr. Gaines, um, your scores are so bad you cannot attend TCC. No. I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> I didn't even know you couldn't make it to community college. I thought they begged for people's money there. <laughs> I remember I left, I, left the, I, left, I left TCC. I'm walking to my car just thinking to myself, oh, my gosh, I'm going to tell Erin this. She's going she gonna to think I'm crazy. And, but as I'm walking to my car, a thought began to be confirmed in my head, a thought that I thought for a long time. And the thought was, yeah, Jacob, you are kind of dumb, aren't you? So I went home. I told Aaron what happened. I told Aaron that I didn't make it. I said, my dreams of higher education are over. So, girl, you better work hard because <laughs> you're making the money now, okay? So, so I didn't tell her that. I'm joking. Maybe I did. Okay. And I thought to myself, why did I even try this? Why did I even go after this? So the next week, I met with Pastor Sharon again. I told her what happened. And again, she challenged my thinking. She challenged my mindset. She said to me, your denial from school is not confirmation of the negative thoughts that you had about yourself. But your denial from school is confirmation of the battle that you need to fight. The battle that you need to go after. So, so check this out. We knew Liberty University recognized our Vineyard Bible College credit. So with extreme hesitation, I applied at Liberty. Check this out. I ended up getting accepted. I passed their math and English placement test. My Bible College credits added up to about two years worth of school. And I can't make this part up. My first full year, full year at Liberty, I had all A's, only two B's. I have a GPA of a 3.8, and I made the dean's list. And I'm only one year away 
from, from graduating. See, I went from barely able to read. The thing is, school was never for me to now being able to be done with, with college in, in less than a year. Now, that's not a brag on myself because I got nothing to brag about. I had a lot of help along the way. It's not a brag on myself, but it is an example of the power of a changed mind, of the power of a changed mind. And you may find yourself in here. You may be in here today, and you're thinking to yourself, there are things I want to achieve. There's goals I want to win. There's battles I'm ready to see victory in. There's dreams I'm ready to pursue. But in order to pursue those things, there must be a change of mind. There must be a change of mind. You may be in a place where you think to yourself, I'll always be like this. I'll never achieve that thing. I'll always be a mess up. I'll never lose those pounds. I'll never get that degree. I'll never reach those dreams. But I'm here to tell you right now that God sent his one and only son to live a life that we couldn't, to die a death that we deserve. Three days later, got back up again so you can live the best life possible. Come on, let's drop God a praise break right now. Oh, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Here you go. I'm feeling like Tom Brady when it's the fourth quarter and you're down. Making the best comeback. All right. See, there must be a change of mind. Are you ready to change your mind today? There must be a change of mind. Now, truly, I believe with my entire heart, the only person on this planet that can keep you from achieving your dreams is you. That's the only person which leads me to my tweetable thought today. None of us will change our lives until we change the way we think. None of us will change our lives until we change the way we think. We must be willing to change our mind. Now, there's a story in the Bible that we're going to follow. I also have three points about three things. We must change in order to change the way we think. But check out this verse in Romans 12, too. It's kind of the theme verse for this, for this message. It says this, do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. When we have a change of mind, we'll be able to clearly test what God's good, pleasing, and perfect will is for our lives. So point one today is this, change your mind by changing your source. Change your mind by changing your source. What is your source? Where do you gather your information from about yourself? What is your source? See, our thoughts will determine our destiny, and your thoughts will determine where you'll be next year. Check this out. Sow a thought, reap an action. Sow an action, reap a habit. Sow a habit, reap a lifestyle. Sow a lifestyle, you will reap your destiny. You are today where your thoughts took you, and you'll be tomorrow where you allow your thoughts to take you. Romans, Romans 8.5 puts it this way. It says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. So letting your sinful nature control your mind leads to death. But letting the Spirit control your mind leads to life and peace. So I say again to you, what is your source? What is controlling your mind? What controls your thoughts? Is it those words spoken over to you as a child that you still believe? Is it that divorce you went through and the label that people slapped on you because of it? Is it that failed job, that failed marriage, that, that thing that happened to you that, that consumes your thought process? What is your source? How do you gather what you think about yourself. Now, now there's this story in the Bible that you may be familiar with if you've been coming to church for a while, but I'm going to preach it a little bit different today. I'm going to preach it a little different today. Let me set up the scene. See, Jesus and his 12 disciples, and that word disciple just means students. Jesus and his 12 students, they just pull off one of the greatest miracles recorded in the Bible. Jesus has fed 15,000 people with a couple pieces of bread and some fish, a.k.a. the number one special from Captain D's. This is this amazing miracle. Jesus told his disciples to get on the boat and sail across the lake. Jesus took another route. Check this out, Matthew 14. It says, the boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves because of the winds. The boat was in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves because of the winds. Now I want you to see what's happening here. Jesus and his disciples have performed this extraordinary miracle. These 12 guys who are with Jesus, they would have been high on life after this, that God just used them to do something so extraordinary. Now they're listening to God. Jesus tells them to go on a boat, sail across the lake. And while they're en route to their destination, Jesus sent them to the winds come. 
and the and it's tossing against the wave, making the waves toss against the boat so hard. And maybe, 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 maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just me, but sometimes I feel like I'm living for God and things are going good and things are going fine. And, and I'm trying to be obedient, listening to God. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to come to church. I'm trying to give my tithe. I'm trying to do all these things for God. But even though I'm living for God, sometimes things happen in life that I wish that didn't happen. Even though I'm living for God, sometimes there's problems that come up, hurts that happen, situations beyond my control. And here are the disciples just listening to Jesus, go, heading in the direction that Jesus told them to go. And they find themselves in a boat in the middle of the lake with the winds and the waves crashing against them. And when they look around, Jesus, well, Jesus is nowhere to be found. Jesus is nowhere near. Now, the icing on the cake is this. It says in the fourth watch of the night, the fourth watch means it's around three or six in the morning. So in the darkest of the night, in the darkest night, the winds are, the waves are tossing the boat because the winds are blowing so hard. And again, maybe it's just me and it could just be me today. Maybe I'm just preaching to myself. But again, when things get hard and are certain, my natural default is not to go to God. Sometimes my natural default is to go back to my old sources. To go back to my old habits, the old way I processed the pain or hurt, the old thing that said that would never leave me, but every time I go to it, it hurts me. Because life comes and it can feel scary and it can feel hard, like a late night boat ride in the middle of the sea when the storm is beating up against you. But, 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 hold on, there's a big old but here. But, but, a storm does not take away from the word of God. A storm does not take away from the word of God. We can't look around at the things around us and accept those things as our source. But instead, we must be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I got to change my source because my old source told me I was in this by myself. But my new source tells me something different. Check this out. It says, now in the fourth watch in the night, Jesus went to them walking on the water. Walking on the That's weird. That's crazy. I don't know about you, if I was at Mount Trashmore and I saw someone walking on a lake, I'd be a little freaked out. Then I'd be concerned because if they fall in that water, that water is highly toxic. So I don't know what happened to them if they did that. <laughs> See, here's this crazy thing going on. A storm is happening. Crazy things are going on. And check this out. When crazy things happen, my old source tells me I'm in this storm by myself. My old source told me I couldn't go to college. My old source told me I'll never lose those pounds. My old source told me you had no one in your time of need. My old source told me you got no hope, you got no help, you're in this by yourself. But my new source tells me even when the winds and the waves are beating against me and it feels like the middle of the darkest night, Jesus approaches me. Jesus comes near to me. And Jesus walks on the water towards me. And I think to myself, why do you have to walk on the water? Why is he walking on the water? Is this some like fancy Jesus thing that he does? He likes long strolls on a, on a stormy night on the water. But the reason why, I got a reason. There's a reason why Jesus walked on the water. This, and this wasn't by accident. This wasn't by just some fancy God thing. The reason why Jesus walked on the water, because he wanted to send a message to the disciples. And he's sending this message to you today that when a storm is coming, in your life. Be calm, be okay, because he's God and he walks on your storms. He's more powerful than what's your storm. So you got to change your source today. Don't listen to your old source. You got to have a new source. Your new source says, I'm right here and I'm right now. Point number one today is this, change your mind by changing your source. Point number two is change your mind by changing your direction. Change your mind by changing your direction. It's good to have Jesus as your source, but now we must move towards him. We are a product of what we repeatedly do. You are a product of what you repeatedly do. So, friends, I have a question for you. Where do you find yourself repeatedly going? What direction do you find yourself repeatedly going? Do you find yourself repeatedly going to a direction of anger? A direction of doubt, a direction of worry, a direction of that habit that you know isn't good for you, but you keep going back there. Is it a direction of a bad relationship that keeps tripping you up? Where do you head? See, one of the hardest things about changing our mind, changing the way we think, is when we know what we should do, yet we still don't do it. 
Knowing something and doing something are two completely different things. Knowing Jesus as your source and activating Jesus as your source are two different things. See, when I was going through a struggle in my life and I was dealing with some issues that you can't believe and I had some problems going on, God spoke to me because I would say, God, but God, I got a good heart. But God, I love you. I got a good heart. And God spoke to me. He said, Jacob, you can have a good heart but have bad habits. And a good heart won't change your bad habits. You got to change your direction. You got to change your direction. See, let's go back to this verse in Romans 12, 2. Let's read it from the message paraphrase of the Bible. It says, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Fix your attention on God. Fix your focus on God. Move in the direction of God, and he will change you from the inside out. See, God is interested in the inside out, not outward in, but inside out, because God is far more interested in the condition, the, the condition of your heart than the motives of your actions. Inside out, so here they are. They're in this boat. The waves are crashing against the boat because the wind is blowing so hard. It's the darkest time of the night. The disciples are on board. They're freaking out. Now here's this crazy scene. Jesus is walking towards them. He's walking on the water. He's walking towards them. And the Bible says something interesting. The Bible says something very interesting here. The Bible does not say when the disciples saw Jesus walking towards them on the water, they were filled with awe. They were filled with wonder. They were, they were relieved. No, the Bible says something interesting. The Bible says when, the, when Jesus was walking towards them, the disciples were Afraid. Afraid. Don't be scared. <laughs> afraid. When Jesus approached the boat, the Bible says the disciples saw him and they were afraid. Heck, they even say they thought they saw a ghost and his name was not Casper because they did not think he was friendly. <laughs> Instead, they saw Jesus walking towards them and they begin to cry out because they were afraid. But notice how the Bible says, notice how they weren't afraid of the winds and the waves anymore. They weren't afraid of their circumstance, but they were afraid of Jesus. See, come on, come on. See, often I think the things we fear the most are not the storms in our lives. But we are afraid that if we trust God in the storm, what happens if nothing really changes? What happens if everything stays the same? Better yet, if I move towards God, what mindset will he challenge me to give up about myself? Friends, what dysfunctional mindsets have you accepted about yourself that God is trying to say to you, I never said that about you. I never said that about you. I never said that's who you were. What dysfunctional mindsets have you found comfort in that God is saying, you got to get rid of that. See, for me, I actually found comfort in the fact that I could say I'm not smart enough, I'm not good enough, because it, as long as I believe that, I could not have to achieve the goals that God has for me. But God said, I don't want you to believe that because what I have for you is ten times better. Friends, what things have you believed about yourself that is preventing you from reaching the calling and the purpose that God has for your life? Immediately, Jesus spoke to them saying, take courage. It is I, do not be afraid. The winds and the waves are crashing. There's rain blowing. Here's this crazy scene. This is, this is a mess right now. This miraculous scene. And here's what the Bible says. The Bible says something else crazy again. The Bible says, and Peter answered him. Wait, 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 wait. And Peter answered him, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold the door, hold the door, hold on, hold on. Jesus said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid, and Peter answered him. The only problem with this, Jesus never asked a question. Jesus didn't ask a question. Jesus made a statement. He said, you don't got to be afraid because I'm, I'm here, just courage. Have courage. I know you're afraid, but have courage. You may be like, but Jesus, there's a storm. There's a storm going on. There's things happening. There's things all around me. I can't control it. I have, no, I have no command over it. I don't know what's going on. And Jesus is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep. I see the storm. I know. But it's okay because I'm, I'm walking on it. I'm walking on the storm. 
Just discourage. Courage. See, friends, Jesus is making statements about his goodness and his power and his love. And sometimes we respond as if he's asking a question about his character. We just got to believe what he says to us. Peter said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Again, and this statement is filled with doubt. It's filled with concern. He said, if it is you, if it's you, is it you? Is that you? Is that you out there, Jesus? He's not sure what's happening around him. And when I read this, I can't say, I can't say, man, Peter, what's wrong with you? Why would you doubt God? Your lack of faith having self. See, I can't say that because often this is my response in the storm. Uh, God, is that you? You out there, boo-boo? God, that's you out there? God, I mean, I guess if it's you, I guess I'll move towards you in my finances and my life and my marriage and my job, I, I guess. I'll move towards you. He has all this doubt. He has all this fear. But notice how Jesus responds. Notice the response of Jesus in this moment. Peter says, if it is you, tell me to come to you on the water. And the Bible says that Jesus says something so simple. Jesus says, come. Yeah, come. Yeah. Yeah, just, just come. But, 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 but doesn't Peter have doubt in his tone? Yeah, just come. But isn't Peter afraid and doesn't he have fear and he's not fully trusting? Yeah, 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 just come. But, but isn't he still overwhelmed by the winds and the waves and the conditions of his current situation and all the things around him still preventing him to fully trust in you and have faith in you? Yeah, it is, but come. But just come anyways. But what about all the junk? Bring it with you. Come. So Pastor Jacob, you're telling me even though I have fear, even though I have doubt, even though I have worry, I can still change my direction and head towards Jesus? Yes. And bring all your stuff with you along the way. See, a life directed towards Jesus does not mean the storms stop, but now we can fix our attention on the one who walks above the storms. Point one, change your, change your mind by changing your source. Point two, change your mind by changing your direction. And my third and my final point today is this, change your mind by changing your perspective. Change your mind by changing your perspective. <clears throat> the habit of a changed mind is fully formed in your perspective of a situation. The winds and the waves are crashing. The other 11 disciples are freaked out. And here we see Peter tell Jesus, if it's you, if it's you, if it's that you out there, just call me and I'll come to you. And check out what the Bible says. The Bible says, when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He's walking on water. Now, why would Peter step out of the boat and believe that he could walk on water? See, friends, your life will never change until you change the way you think about your life. He changed his mind by changing his source, source to Jesus. He changed his mind by changing his direction and moving towards Jesus. But the thing that got him out of the boat was a change of perspective. He changed his perspective. See, Peter steps out with faith, but that's not the only thing that he does. This is not just a story about a faith walk. Peter walks on a new perspective. And for you this year to move uphill, to move towards the direction that God wants for you, it may require you to have a new perspective on the same problem you've been dealing with. To move upward, it may require you to change your perspective about the living condition that you're in. Because sometimes we have these things and we have these hurts and we just want God to remove them. We want God to take them away. And I believe God is about delivering us from things. But sometimes the very thing we struggle with is the thing that God wants to use to elevate us to a new way of living, to a new perspective of him. See, 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 we cannot get down in our darkness, but instead we can call out to the light. Notice, 
Notice what's happening here. There's 12 guys in the same situation, yet only one has a different perspective about the same situation. 11 disciples perceive this situation as hopeless and tragic. And one man perceives the same situation as his opportunity to change, as his opportunity to move towards God. It's kind of like we can't conform to the patterns of this world. Conform, what is conform? What does that even mean to be to conform? Conform, why would I conform? What does it mean to conform? Conform means to comply to the rules and standards of the world around you. See, when there's panic, when there's chaos, the world wants you to, co to comply to those things. But the Bible says, but don't conform, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Now, now, real fast, this word renew, the word renew, what does renew mean? Renew in the Greek is the same word we get for renovate, renovation. Has anyone here ever seen the show Fix a Rupper? Chip and Joanna Gaines, we distant cousins somehow. Send me some money, please, all right? See, 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 the premise of the show is taking on an old, run-down, beat-up house and fixing it up, taking an old thing and making it a new thing. To renovate is to take something old and change it to a new thing. And it, and it, and it may come to you today, and, so, and God may be wanting to do something with you today, that you got something that you keep struggling with. You got some fears that keep coming to you. You got some problems that you can't deal with. And God is trying to say to you, I don't want you to throw these things away, but I want you to have a renovation in your mind. I want you to change the way you think. I I want you to change the way you perceive this problem because the thing that God is trying to do with you, he wants you to have a fixer-upper in your mind in the way you think. Here's Peter. He's walking on the water because his perspective has changed. The Bible says it this way. The Bible says this in Colossians 3, 2. It says, set your mind, set your mind, set your mind. Come on, set your mind. Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. Peter's mind is set on Christ. He's walking towards him, but there go that but again. But another big but happens. Come, Jesus said. Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came towards Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. Peter is walking on the water, moving towards Jesus, but then the wind gets to him, and he became afraid, and the fear led to him losing focus and starting to sink. And see, oftentimes, oftentimes, we preach this story, and we think to ourselves, oh, yeah, you can walk on the water, you can go on the water, but don't you lose sight on Jesus. Because the moment you lose sight, you're going to fall. See, the miracle of this story is not the fact that Peter walked on water. That is not the miracle of the story. The miracle is not that he walked on water. See, the miracle is this, that when Peter was walking on the water and the winds and the waves got to him, when the problems of life began to knock him around, when he started to sink in his own issues and his own fears and his own insecurities, the miracle of the story is when he was sinking low, he cried out to God and Jesus rescued him in his time of need. Friends, the miracle is when we cry out to God in our time of need. The Bible says this, immediately Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You a little faith, he said. Why did you doubt? I want you to know something. Jesus did not rebuke Peter here. This is not a rebuke by Jesus. Because for Jesus to rebuke him would be to, for him to contradict his character. Because why would Jesus rebuke someone that comes towards him and cries out to him? What, Peter, what, what Jesus does here to Peter when he pulls him up and he says, you a little faith, why did you doubt? He's saying, Peter, there's something inside of you that's bigger than these winds and these waves all around you. Stop believing your old source. Stop believing these other things. Dude, I'm right here, and I'm right now. Friends, you'll never change your life until you change the way you think. In order to move towards God this year, to achieve the goals that you want, there must be a change of mind. Bow your heads with me. Let's pray. God, God, we thank you. We thank you that when we're sinking deep, when we're falling low, God, you immediately 
respond. And I feel like the Lord wants some people in here to know today that he's immediately, that he's instantly, that he's with you, that you may have failed and you may have fought and you may have made some decisions that you wish you didn't, but God is not judging you. God is not angry at you, but his grace is sufficient for you. Mm. I feel like the Lord is saying, see, the power of this story was not that Peter walked on the water the first time, but he walked on water a second time. But the second time he walked on water, he walked with Jesus. And for you, you've been trying to walk on water by yourself for way too long, and I can feel the Holy Spirit saying, walk with me. Walk with me on the water. I'm going to bring you to your destination. I'm here for you. I feel like the Lord is saying, he's going to heal marriages in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord saying, he's going to restore dreams in the name of Jesus. Don't give up yet. Just walk with me. You may be in here today and you don't know this Jesus I'm talking about. You're like, Pastor Jacob, that sounds good, but I don't, I never made a decision to trust Jesus with my life. Or maybe you have made a decision, but life got in the way. Winds and waves came in and distracted you from following Jesus. And you're saying, I want to make a decision to follow him again. If that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Right where you are in your chair, I'm not going to call you out or embarrass you, nothing like that. But right where you are in your chair, pray this prayer with me. If you want to make a decision to trust Jesus with your life, just say right where you are, Jesus, forgive me for my mistakes. Make me new. Today I trust in you. Today I follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. Let's give God some praise in here. Thanks for tuning in to today's message. If God is impacting your life through this ministry, join us in reaching others by investing today. You can give by texting your donation amount to 757-230-2110 or by going to vineyardchurch.com slash give. Also, don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss an update. We'll see you next week.